So let us talk how one can select the appropriate solvent during mobile phase preparation. See, mobile phase is very important component of the reverse phase chromatography and without that, you will not be able to run the chromatography. But what is the guidance available to select the appropriate solvent system? And here is the information. So as a part of the selection of suitable solvent during preparation of mobile phase, these are the five points that we are going to discuss today. The first one is what is the solvent strength? So to decide on to the selection of the solvent during mobile phase preparation, you need to understand the requirement of the solvent. So what is actually determining the requirement of the solvent? It is the illusion of the analyte and the illusion of the analyte strongly depends on to the interaction of analyte onto the stationary phase and the strength of the solvent. The strength of the solvent plays a very important role in allowing analyte to interact for more time or even not allowing for analyte to interact for more time with the stationary phase. And that is called as the strength of the solvent. That is called as the strength of the solvent. The weaker is the solvent is, you know, the solvent or mobile phase will give more time to analyze to interact with the stationary phase and it will elute late into the chromatographic run. And the stronger is the solvent is means what? The stronger solvent will not give a sufficient amount of the time to analyze to interact with the stationary phase. And as the analyte is not going to interact with the stationary phase for longer time, it will elute very early into the chromatographic run. So based on your requirement, you can decide on to the which strength of the solvent you need to have in the mobile phase. So let us understand now which factors, which factor really governs the strength of the solvent as far as a reverse phase chromatography is concerned. And here is the guidance on it. So greater the hydrophobicity, greater the hydrophobicity, greater is the strength of the solvent or more is the non-polarity, the greater will be the strength of the solvent. So as far as reverse phase chromatography, you know, we are left with, I think, very minimum number of the solvent that we can use. One can be water, methanol, acin, or to some extent, tetrahydrofuron. So let us understand what is the hydrophobicity of these four important solvents. And if you look into the details, you will find that the tetrahydrofuron is the highest hydrophobic solvent or highest non-polar solvent between these four compounds. Then comes the acetonitrile, then comes methanol and water is the least. So just to summarize, the water is the weakest solvent into the reverse phase chromatography. Then comes the methanol, then comes ACN and the THF is the strongest one between these four different solvents. So this is the way now you can understand whether I need to have ACN in the mobile phase or I need to have a methanol or THF into the mobile phase. So just to summarize once again, ACN will yield the higher retention time being a weaker solvent and THF will yield a lesser retention time being a stronger solvent. I am talking in the context of reverse phase chromatography. So what defines the strength of the mobile phase? Right, so what defines the strength of the mobile phase? So the proportion of stronger solvent or more relatively, the organic solvent determines the strength of the mobile phase into the reverse phase chromatography. So in case if you have a mobile phase with let us say 80 water and 20 ACN, and if you select another mobile phase with 50 water and 50 ACN, so obviously in the second mobile phase, you have a 50 percentage of the acetonitrile and that becomes the stronger mobile phase as compared to first one. Now, second example is what? Let us say you have a mobile phase containing 50% water and 50% acetonitrile. If you have the another mobile phase containing 50% water, but now 50% of the THF, tetrahydrofuron. So which one is the stronger mobile phase? Will it be mobile phase containing THF? Absolutely. So the mobile phase containing THF is going to become the stronger mobile phase. Let us understand the useful organic solvents into the reverse phase liquid chromatography. 
so as we discussed you know the methanol the acn and the thf these are the highly used and explored organic solvent into the reverse phase chromatography so let us understand you know how they are so useful and what are their unique uh, uh, uniqueness and how they differ from one another so as far as methanol is concerned the methanol uh, brings the 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 flavor of hydrogen bonding methanol can interact with the analyte with the hydrogen bonding because it contains the hydrogen in case if your analyte consists of the electro negative compound like uh, the carboxylic acid or amino compounds now this will develop a hydrogen bond with those electronegative atoms like oxygen nitrogen or sulfur and because of this hydrogen bonding what is going to happen the compound will re interact lesser amount of time or com compound will interact for less amount of time with the stationary phase but it will prefer to interact with the methanol which is a part of the mobile phase now as the compound is interacting more with the methanol which is a part of this mobile phase now the compound will have a less amount of time for the interaction onto the stationary phase and hence it will elude early into the chromatographic run so that way sometimes the methanol will help your compound to elude early uh, if you are really looking for the shorter retention time method uh then let us talk about the acetonitrile so acetonitrile consists of this um, nitrile functional groups c triple bond n and the c triple bond n makes acn a highly polar compound c triple bond n it also brings the uh, the, the dipole dipole interaction this brings the the flavor of dipole dipole interaction uh, because this nitrile group you know this nitrile groups will attract this nitrogen group will attract the electron cloud towards himself and that will result a slight positive charge onto the carbon so slight positive charge onto the carbon slight negative charge onto the nitrogen so assume that in case if you have the molecule analyte which is the again a dipole molecule which has the a plus delta charge and the minus delta charge so the minus delta charge present on to the analyte will get attracted towards the plus delta charge of the carbon of the acn and that way they will talk each other very often and this acn will give a less amount of chances to the analyte to interact with the stationary phase and that way as the analyte is going to remain into the mobile phase for longer time it will elude early into the chromatographic run so this is the way because of the dipole dipole interaction acn can give the different selectivity similarly because of the hydrogen bonding interaction the methanol can brings the different selectivity all together then comes the thf so thf is a basic in nature and it is the strongest solvents among these three solvents so in case if you want to retain if you want to you know elute the compound early because you don't want to have a higher retention time higher run time method the tetrahydrofuran is going to help you out <clears throat> so let us understand the factors to be considered while selection of the organic solvent so the solvent strength that we discussed in quite depth uh, based on to the necessity whether higher retention time or the lower retention time you will be able to understand what solvent state i am looking for what is the proportion of the organic solvent i must look into the mobile phase then the viscosity is also very important factor see because viscosity uh, is going to determine how much flow of the mobile phase you can give the higher is the viscosity higher will be the back pressure and you will have a resistance to the higher flows so as per as the viscosity is concerned acn in aqueous phase gives the lower back pressure lower possible viscosity and that is that makes acn a preferred organic solvent the methanol and thf gives almost similar viscosity but they gives little higher viscosity solutions and aids the higher back pressures then comes the uv cutoff in case of you are using a uv detector 
right this is the rplc method and you are using the uv detector as your detection technique so in that case it is also very important to understand the uv cutoff so the uv cutoff is means what the solvent at which wavelength gives more than 0.5 absorbance unit as a response okay so if you are, if you understand the uv cutoff of acn it is only 190 nanometer so you can use acn even from 190 nanometer onwards all methods methanol has a uv cutoff of 210 nanometer means methanol cannot be used below 210 nanometer detection wavelength in case if you have a 200 nanometer as your detection wavelength methanol stands unsuitable and look at the THF, it is 230 nanometer. So you can use the THF as a solvent into a mobile phase only for the detections in which the detection wavelength is more than 230 nanometer. If it is 220 nanometer, the THF becomes unsuitable. The fifth point is very important and interesting, you know, why to avoid acetonitrile during a usage of phenyl column. You must have heard about the phenyl chemistry, it is a little polar columns because in case of reverse phase chromatography the higher challenge is what in retaining the polar compounds because the polar compounds elute too early into the reverse phase run so the another way of you know altering the or increasing the retention of polar compound is by making the stationary phase little polar like attracts like and hence the polar stationary phases are now going to attract the polar compounds and the phenyl ring into the stationary phase is one of that trick. So the moment you have phenyl columns, uh, which is definitely going to help you to retain polar compounds, but the caution is you need to avoid the ACN. And here is the explanation that why you must avoid the ACN in the mobile phase. See, the phenyl ring brings the pi pi interaction. Phenyl contains the uh, pi bonds into conjugation. And if there is another compound, you know, your analyte also contains the phenyl ring, so these two phenyl rings, one present onto the stationary phase and another into analyte will talk to each other with the pi pi interaction. Also understand, ACN also contains the pi bonds, right, into the nitrile group. And these pi bonds can also talk with the, the pi bond present into the phenyl column, right? It will present into phenyl column and then there may be a competition for which pi bond to interact, whether analyte will interact or whether the uh, the pi bond uh, present into the ACN can talk and interact with the stationary phase. So you are unnecessarily creating a competition for your interested analyte compound because of the presence of astronitrile. Because ACN also has a pi bond and it can talk to the stationary phase with the pi pi interaction. And hence your compound though it has also the pi electrons but it will not get a chance to talk to the stationary phase and this the acn can disrupt the pi pi interaction of the analyte with the phenyl compound the phenyl column so it is always a good idea to avoid the usage of acn in case if you are using the phenyl column i hope you must have understood you know the briefly how the solvent strength can be defined in case of reverse phase chromatography then what are the characteristic properties of three important solvent methanol acn and thf and then the, what are the factors which really needs to be considered during selection of the organic solvent in the mobile phase and the last one is how to why to avoid the usage of acn in case if you are using a phenyl column Thank you very much for watching this video and I will meet you soon with such kind of informative and useful video. Till then, take care and bye-bye. See you soon.